Hello my soccer universe and let's finish it up with the Serie A review of the past weekend. A weekend that was for me Saturday. I watched basically all of Serie A with, you know, mostly. And then uh, Sunday almost nothing and on Monday I watched actually a very interesting uh, Verona Udine game. So yeah. Uh, while Milan didn't have the most impressive win, I still decided to go for Milan uh, because the resilience they showed really, really impressed me. Uh, and unlike Lusk, who received a very, very, very late equalizer, Milan almost did the same, but they came immediately back. It was truly stoppage, uh, stoppage time heroics from them. In the game against Empoli, where three of the four goals were all scored in stoppage time. Pretty remarkable stuff, I gotta say. Uh, what's not so remarkable is other big injuries that are happening. Uh, Milan squad is getting ravaged by injuries, which I'm not looking very much forward to. We, there's Chelsea coming up, there's Juve coming up, there's Chelsea again come coming up. Hitting basically at the wrong side of the season on the other side. Uh, like last year, there was also around this time that Milan had the injuries and they just stayed in touch, showed resilience and then in spring they really could kick into the next gear to get the title. A title that I'm more and more looking at Napoli. And yes, this is a dangerous thing to say because they always flatter to deceive early in the season. But what impresses me with this Napoli side is that um, there is no... Uh, Victor Osimen, but they still look very good. They lost uh, Mertens, they lost Insigne, they lost Koulibaly. They still seem like a proper team. I said it the last time around, there's a whole lot of squad building went in there. This And I honestly have at the moment this feeling that this team has more personality than the one with the big stars from last season. Maybe big words for now, but I really got to say I'm very impressed by Napoli. And probably this might be this might be Napoli's year. I I don't want to jinx them, and I don't want to fall into the trap that I have uh, fallen before, where I thought Napoli is for real, and then it really didn't work out. But it looks at least impressive for now. However, I think the biggest story coming uh, from this weekend is that Inter lost now the, a third game with uh, within four or so three other four games they have lost, and seem to be in a real crisis mode i gotta say i mean all the losses all, all three of his losses was a derby against milan um which truth be told i think milan overall deserved that win just a tad bit more although it could have well gotten into a draw the one at Udine didn't come un unexpected because Udine is flying. Uh, it is just that you gave up a lead and you did that this weekend again. However, I also have to say this was not one of those losses where Inter really played badly. They actually played overall quite good. It is just that Roma were super clinically in converting their chances. And so, yeah, uh, an early drop for Inter. Uh, I think in the rating they're just still a smidgen above Milan, but more or less the auto, those two are top in the ratings. But it has been a huge fall because uh, Inter were uh, quite ahead there, gotta be said. So, yeah, this is basically uh, my main observations. We had a Juve win. We also, and I probably should, should mention because it is a pretty big story, we had the first female referee uh, between uh, Sassuolo and Salernitana with Ferrari Caputo stepping in uh, and doing it all purely based on merit. I think with a 31 year, years old, she's also relatively young and I know there are some crazy calls sometimes in Serie A, but overall, I think the reputation of uh, Italian refs are, is still quite good. And maybe if you get a really good female ref in there like Frappa or Steinhaus, I think this might help the Italian game a whole lot. Let's look uh, quickly through the results. Uh, I actually, I was watching the North London Derby and I said Napoli-Torino sounds like an interesting game to put on a second screen. Um, and then I think for the first 50 minutes, I didn't look uh, away from the screen because Napoli were just really overwhelming. I actually thought that Torino will give them a game. They're nothing like that. Anguissa uh, scores two and the game was already settled. And then Quarazgelia, uh, 
I call him Corradonna, let's make it that way. Uh, he uh, adds a, thir a third one um, in the 37th, and in between there were quite a few chances. Only just before they have Sanabria pulls one back to make a scoreline a little bit more palatable. And then actually uh, the game uh, flamed out a little bit uh, and got, got, got into a scare stalemate. Um, also, Napoli played, of course, in their um, Halloween jerseys. And part of me really thought maybe I, and I have not checked the store, uh, but maybe I should have gotten one of one of these as an investment these days because, you know, uh, money is losing value and this might be a jersey that could gain value potentially. Although the, one of the match worn ones you can get on the Napoli store at the moment if you bid on them. But overall, uh, Napoli, I said it in the intro, really looking good. And that leads us already to, to, to the big game. And, and, and again, that, that's the one game that I didn't watch fully because I was so focused on Lask against Salzburg. Um, or Salzburg against Lask, totally uh, unexpected that this was a tight game. Uh, so I only followed this uh, on the side a little bit. But um, first half, honestly, it was in the... They completely dominated. They had a goal correctly disallowed um, by Oed, um, through Edin Dzeko. It was an offside, but you know, I'm getting used to those where just the limb is in front and, and so when the uh, the main part of the of the body doesn't seem offside, I'm getting used to that. I still don't like it quite, but okay, if that's the rule and they're consistent, uh, so be it. They take then the lead through to the Di Marco in the third minute, and it was super deserved at that point. Roma had not shown anything. That is until uh, Spinazzola darts down, plays across uh, to Dybala, who more or less one times it into the net, but one has to look at Handanovic. That was not. That was a big mistake that should not have been uh, made. So it's one one. A uh, bit, bit, bit of a letter for Roma, where Mourinho was sitting in a truck uh, outside to watch uh, his team, and Inter then had quite a few chances to take the lead again. I think they hit the crossbar. Uh, I, I was was it then uh, just an, a smidgen uh, from from goal? I really thought that Inter gonna uh, take 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 the lead and get themselves a big boost. Uh, it is then again Pellegrini plays a crossing after a foul that uh, was a little bit contentious. Plays it in and Smalling heads it in the 7th, 75th minute. And at that point, then I really thought there's no way that uh, Roma are gonna lose that one because honestly, Inter did not look, they looked shell shocked there. And you know, uh, with Aslani came off, Jalan uh, Noglu, Bastoni, the Dumfries, all these came up, but Bot but comes in, Mikitarian, Korea, Gosens, Belanova, not really. Uh, Inter tried, but Roma got the win. And as I said, uh, serious questions are asked from Inzaghi. Uh, he is probably not getting fired immediately, but it doesn't look good. And now having Barcelona ahead, it's going to be tough days for Inter. Uh, just looking at the injuries, it's also tough days for Milan ahead, although this, the schedule, uh, the next two weeks aside more or less, the schedule is overall a little bit easing up. However, injuries are piling. Uh, the one that hurts definitely most is Mike Magnon, because uh, he is one, he is a goalkeeper that can that can save you. But on on, on the other side, I'd rather have him fit for the second part of the season. But uh, there are others like uh, Theo Hernandez who will come 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 back. We already have um, Florenzi out, so uh, the injury list is piling. And it piled again. It was a rainy night in, at Empoli. Milan having a few chances. Salamakers needs to make a goal uh, early on. Um, but Milan had the game more or less under control. However, the first half was more or less uh, characterized with Salamakers coming off with an injury. Probably the end of his year. Uh, Calabria similarly both seem to be muscle injuries, but also for Empoli, Grassi had to come off. Uh, what, who came in? Krunic and Kalulu. So uh, it is, uh, I gotta say, I mean, they did in the transfer window spend well to have a little bit depth in the squad. And that is actually what, what uh, makes it a little bit more positive for me. Um, second half, I think Empoli came out. And uh, the one thing, well, Empoli is not a great team. They always play forward. And uh, it's actually never an easy game at Empoli. Uh, but you have to get used to it. You have to t uh, take up the challenge and then you will perform well. And uh, Milan, I felt 
were not great, but were uh, resourceful enough creating chances, but not taking them. Then I think Kierke also came off with an in injury test come coming on. And uh, Giroud definitely needs to take a break. I mean, this guy is just playing minutes like like, like crazy. And Teketelare also um, came off and Brian Diaz. And I think it's good that they let Teketelare play to get a little bit used to, to the league. And very, very often you see glimpses of what this guy is capable of doing. I'm still riding high and bring on Brian Diaz as an impact sub is exactly how I think he should be used. Um, finally, from a throw-in, Leao gets the ball. He was actually an offside, but there's no offside on a throw-in. Uh, gets the ball across to Rebic. It's 1-0 in the 79th minute. I'm thinking, yeah, that's exactly all we need. Meanwhile, Bayrami had a huge chance uh, before that to give Empoli the lead, like running alone on goal, but seemingly Tataruzano uh, scared him. Uh, I need to say the, you know, Empoli then pushed forward. It was a foul from Ben, 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 ben Acer that resulted in a free kick that Bayrami is taking. And he goes in, in, in its net. And if you look at the replay, I don't want to say he was absolute, it was his uh, fault, but he didn't look good. He made the, uh, the jump to one side and then um, couldn't save that one. On the other side, you know, he just came in again. And I, th I think Tata Rosano is a gold goalkeeper that needs a few games. I mean, last year he saved a penalty from uh, Lautaro in the first derby of the season. So I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's not Mike Manio, but I think he is at least a, a useful goalkeeper. Uh, that is something, and he, he, I think the only big mistake that he ever made was the one when he came on the season before against Roma, when he, where he caused Milan to lose points. Um, but the one thing that you have to give Milan credit for, because at that point, I just had seen that Lusk throw away a lead uh, in stoppage time. I really thought, no, not Milan, not Milan also. From the kickoff, they go out and uh, immediately make an attack. And uh, Balotouré, ball falls to Balotouré. I think Krunic has it his, his way and he puts it into the net. Nine, 93rd minute. So 92nd, by Rami scores. 93rd, Balotouré gives Milan the lead again. Of course, Empoli go forward. The stoppage time is, is extended. And yeah, with Empoli going forward, there were ample of space for Leao. And it's again, Rebic plays it into Leao, who then... With incredible speed. I think some of them said that he was only of a fraction of a second of the Portuguese 60 meter record and he had to control the ball in immunity. So the speed of his is just incredible. And then he thinks the goalie to make it a proper 3 1 scoreline. Hard work, but in the end it was worth it. And as I said, stoppage time heroics. That's all that was needed from Milan. Um, as I said, Sunday's game, I didn't see much. I want to point out the Lazio game. The 4 0 win over Spezia uh, is not worth it because Immobile didn't score. He even missed a penalty very, very early on in the third, third minute ago. But Milinkovic Savic getting going. Also, Alessio Romagnoli opening his Lazio account. We already said the, uh, big, um, the big notable stuff about Sassuolo's 5 0 win over Sassuolo. Um, with uh, Ferreira Caputo come, coming in as the first female referee. Um, Sassolo picking up some steam. Uh, but above that, there is we see some Doria looking in true trouble of getting rele re 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 relegated, getting uh, rid of their coach, former Mi Milan coach who shouldn't be anywhere there. Maybe some Doria could turn around because we need some Doria in Serie A. It's just one of those classic Serie A teams. In the evening, I actually was at one point uh, considering watching Atalanta against Fiorentina, but never uh, got around to it. Um, from what I hear is the Fiorentina over was actually the better team in that one. It controlled uh, the pace. And it's a very different Atalanta. This is an At Atalanta that goes more on the car country. It's a little bit more uh, Italian, for lack of a better, better, better word. And they get the winning goal through Ademola Lukman. And then in, in the evening, Bologna just, uh, you know, you fired coach Mihalovic a little bit ridiculously. Yes, you got the first win uh, after that one, but honestly, since then Bologna has been rather stale and I'm worried about Bologna as well. Uh, Juve, and this is again not a great Juve side at, at, the very, at, at the very moment, but I hope I'm not going to eat my words come next week. But uh, all, the big, uh, all the important guys scored. You had the first goal by Kostic, then Vlahovic. 
and then uh, Milik. So uh, in that sense, you were firing again, but again, uh, this Bologna team did not really show up. Interesting, of course, also that instead of having um, pennants being in exchanged, they exchanged uh, FIFA covers with Bologna and FIFA 23 uh, boxes, <laughs> which I thought was uh, very, very interesting. I actually saw most of the Verona Udine game yesterday evening because uh, I thought I really want to see U U U Udine again, and I have to, I have to say I was not so convinced because um, while the game was rather rather even, I always felt that Verona are more threatening. They actually duly took the lead uh, through Doig, uh, which uh, was a very uh, well take take shot. I mean. It doesn't take the it, it takes a bounce before it goes, but it was out of the air. And I actually thought that Verona really had the game nicely under control for most of the time. That is until they didn't, because uh, they were failed and assist bet to the seventieth. And the game that at this point I thought Verona might as well see this out and play this home was a one-one. And I said, okay, yeah, one-one. Um, at that point, Verona I think lost a little bit the grip of the game. And, um, but it was not that Udinese, I felt, were so threatening. However, they get the winner again in stoppage time. So much it crosses and Biol uh, heads it in and give Udine another win. And believe it or not, among the teams that I have, Udine is again the biggest winner. I just didn't want to uh, wear them for the next uh, third time in a, in, in a row in a way. But Udine is the story of the season so far. Um, they are sitting now in third behind Napoli and Atalanta and you know wait for At Atalanta then we have uh, so Udine one one point behind we have Lazio and Milan basically and also Roma sitting kind of you know if one of those up top trip we we will de we will definitely move in it's a very in interesting table I think it's where uh, the Juve Sassolo Inter um, group that is the the more on on the disappointing side and of course on the, on the bottom we have teams we would expect Cremonese there uh, but uh, Hellas is a little bit of a sort of surprise and Sampdoria yes I know ahead of every season many were uh, worried I think Bologna is also going uh, in that direction um, when we look at, at the bars as, as I said Udine are the biggest surprise of the season you see the negative bars at uh, Juve and Inter already so solo hanging in there for for sure but it's on on, on the bottom especially Sansa Sampdoria it's definitely performing worse than one would expect uh, as for regular um, uh, expected not regular expected uh, final standings at the moment it is Napoli's lose we saw it or already I think my model gives them a 37% chance ahead of Milan's 33% 530 is even more lopsided towards Napoli in that case um, but I actually think unless Milan uh, really get hit by an in in injury rise, it might as well become down to those two teams with Inter already at a distance uh, serious, serious distance ahead to head with Atalanta Roma move, moving in there and Juventus only on the Europa League spot also looks kind of strange you see after Torino there's a real cut and I, I would say we have a solid midfield with Fiorentina uh, Sassuolo and Torino um, and Udinese has to yet decide will they go fight for Europe or will they fall down at the moment I think they are more on the move up on the bottom uh, it is Almost as expected, let's the two of the three promoted side. I mean, Monza getting now two wins in, in, in a row, got them out of it. But we have, of course, uh, Lecce, Cremonese in there. Salah so Salonitana probably is a team that everyone expected to go down last season, so it would not be a surprise if they go down. But Sampdoria is the one that is uh, one really has to worry about. On the next week, we actually have early on two really interesting games. We have first Sassuolo against Inter. Giving the form of Sassuolo in and, the, and uh, Inter in the bad form, this could be one. But I actually think that Inter will bounce back on this one. Then we have one of the biggest games in the calendar between Milan and Juve. And I'm a little bit scared. I was not so scared. It's more the injuries that worry me than actually Juventus. But this is a Juve team that if you get them on the wrong day, they can definitely hurt you. Um, on Sunday, 3 o'clock, I won Udine Atalanta. That's actually the top game of that uh, match day. Um, and I want to also see if Cremonese continue their offensive play and what they can do against Napoli, although I would expect Napoli. Nap Nap is a really fun side to watch playing against Ajax in the midweek so also and then uh, Monday with Fiorentina Lazio also not an uninteresting game uh, to end it on 
So that was it from me from Serie A. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to um, see more videos like these. Add a comment below if you want to add to anything that I've said in this video. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!